Hello friends, Vidrosevich here. Welcome back to my Hearthstone season modeling project. This is now part two. Part one I'll link in the comments and the description if you're curious about what's going on. The reason why I was doing this is because I was a little bit inspired from the January 13th Designer Insights live stream. And there were three major things talked about by Ben Brode and Dean Ayala that really piqued my interest. And it was all about the idea of reducing ladder anxiety and ladder grindiness. The three major systems that they were talking about potentially testing and looking into adding to Hearthstone was first the plateau system, which is what I actually did test in part one of my Hearthstone modeling. And what this does is it would add plateaus at rank 15, 10, and 5, where you would then no longer be able to lose stars. And what I'm going to be testing in this video and the other two points that were talked about in the live stream, we're adding potentially more bonus stars while laddering. And then also adding bonus stars while above rank 5. And in this video, I'll be looking at combining the plateau method with the bonus star method. So I want to give a brief technical explanation of the model so far. More details can be found in my part 1 video. But just as a quick summary, I programmed the model using Java, and I loaded Vicious Syndicate data win rates into arrays of players. I processed batches of 15,000 players each run in groups of playing either 25, 50, 100, or 150 games. And I tested the current model or method, which is the ladder that we know and love right now, where you have three outcomes for each game. You can either win and earn a star, win on a win streak and earn two stars, or lose a game to lose one star. And I tested that against the plateau method, which I just mentioned makes it so that you cannot lose stars at ranks 15, 10, or 5. We found a Gaussian distribution of players using the current method. And this helped to validate our model results, as it was very similar to what Blizzard published in their You're Better Than You Think article. We also found that the impact of the plateau method was not fully realized until players were playing more than 50 games. And so the results of the current method and the plateau method were nearly identical before players were playing at least 50 games. And finally, we found that there were buildups of players at each of the plateaus and that there was a Gaussian decay from each of these plateaus at those points. So what I want to share with you in this video is the results of testing the two bonus star method and then testing the combined impact of the plateau method and the bonus star method together in one single run. And as I mentioned, these are both going to be compared against the current method at 25, 50, 100, and 150 games being played per player. Jumping right into our first results graph, what we're looking at here is the current method on the left being compared against the double star method on the right. On the y-axis, what we have is player percentage distribution. And so what we see here is that the current method has a reasonable decay as we go from rank 20 towards rank 14, 13. And the double star method has a similar decay. However, we have higher percentages of players at the higher ranks in the teens. We're now going to jump to 50 games being played for each method. And what we see is that the current method continues its reasonable decay towards the higher ranks. However, the double star, there's a lot more noise now in our results. And this can be attributed to when we look at the data, all it takes is a few wins and any deck is able to boost itself through the ranks very, very quickly. And that is what accounts for the random noise that we're seeing in these overall results. Going into 100 games, we see very similar results again. The current method is now having this almost normal distribution where there's the highest number of players around rank 15. And this decays as we go towards legend. Whereas a double star now, we're seeing the number of the percentage of players increasing significantly as we continue to increase in rank. And this again is attributed to the fact that players are earning significantly more stars on their win streaks. And once we get into 150 game result comparison between the current method and the double star method, we see a very, very absurd distribution of players in the double star. There's over half of our players are ranked 10 or above, and this is just something that I can never see Blizzard really going for. Now what we're looking at is a comparison of the current method and the combined methods of both the plateau and the double star method. And what we're looking at here is very similar results actually to what we saw with the double star method. And this is to be expected because when we were looking at only the plateau method, we did not see a significant difference between the current method and the plateau method. Now as we move into the 50 game, comparison of the current method here on the left once again and the combined method now on the right I was actually very worried at first when I saw this result because this graph if you look at this graph of 50 games combined method and the 50 games double star method the graphs look very very similar now the numbers are actually different when I plotted it all out 
but it but it worried me a lot. When we move on to the comparison now of the 100 games being played at the current method and the combined method, we see a very different story being told to us. What we're seeing here is we're realizing the plateau at rank 15 and at rank 10, which is something that we did not see with the plateau method until we made it to 150 games. And now, much like the 150 game result, when we had only the double star method, we see an absolutely absurd result here with the combined method, which is very much to be expected. Over 20% of players are at rank 5 or above. Nearly everyone is above rank 15. I don't think this is something that Blizzard would ever want to do. Maybe this is something in 50 years when they're shutting down the servers, they go, okay, you know what, everyone gets legend rank. But right now, I just don't see this being a viable actual option, combining these two methods in the way that they are presented right now. So the first major takeaway from this exercise is that the combined method is simply too powerful right now. One modification that I could see working to maybe, maybe have this method work is that if the extra stars stops at rank 15, this would help remove some of the experienced players from the early ranks so that new players can still enjoy the ladder as they get into Hearthstone. We also once again saw the impact of the plateau method not being realized until more than 50 games were being played. And this is exactly the same result that we saw in part one. And we saw this when it was implemented in the combined method, which is a very expected result. And now once again, what we see from this is the fact that players only playing a few games per month will not feel the impact of the system directly. One of the things that we saw is that the more games that are being played in each simulation, the greater the impact these changes have. But the most powerful takeaway that I think we really have from this entire simulation is the fact that there are options readily available to Blizzard to help reduce the grindiness in terms of ladder fatigue and ladder anxiety for new players coming onto the ladder. And that's one of the really positive things that I think really came out of this whole exercise for me. I do want to acknowledge a couple shortcomings before I finish up the video and talk about some of the future work that I saw planned. There were a lot of assumptions with the data that I used being slightly out of date and the sample sizes being too small. I used 15,000 players per run, but that's not going to be exactly representative of the 20 plus million that Hearthstone does experience every single season. One of the other things that I still want to do in the future is assigning a random skill parameter to each player's win rate. I have done some initial tests at plus or minus 6% and I think that is fair based on the skill of the decks being played versus someone who's always legend every month versus me who is not. I think that's a fair distribution of win rates. Because I'm going to be rerunning all of these things as a personal aside, I'm going to see if I can get multi-threaded compiling to work in Eclipse, which is how I'm compiling my Java files. And then one of the other things that I did have some pretty interesting feedback from my first post was the fact that maybe we can look into combining the data from all of the number of games played to get more of an overall distribution representative for each of these methods, which would be an interesting thing to do. And I am thinking that it's not going to be too hard, so I'll probably try and include that in, in my next update. Before I go, this is the part of the video where I ask you to subscribe to my channel if you're enjoying these videos and you want to be getting more of these updates, or if you want to be following along on my Hearthstone highs and lows as I continue my laddering experience with my basically all anti-aggro decks. Thanks for hanging out with me, everyone. I'll see you next time. Keep your stick on the ice.